Today's modern fail, uh, the Baby Lock Decorator's Choice sewing machine. It's uh, Halloween and my daughter wants to use it, but although when you turn it on, everything looks fine. If you try it, it spin, spins free and it says the safety device has been activated. All right, so I'm glad that the the bomb has the safety activated. Try to find out what's wrong with it. Manual says safety device has been activated. The motor locked up because the thread is tangled. That's not what's happening here. I think the motor is connected to nothing. So that doesn't help. Yeah, the needle won't even come down. So definitely motor detached from something. By the way, before we open it up, Baby Lock, what kind of brand is that? It's Japanese and it's actually a brand from the company Juki. Longtime viewers of the channel will remember my Juki Daisy Wheel printer. But Juki started out as a sewing machine company. To make things even more complicated, most of Juki's consumer sewing machines, branded Baby Lock, are actually manufactured by Brother who also started as a Japanese sewing machine manufacturer. Anyhow, there are a zillion baby lock models and our particular one is one we have had for ages and is called the decorator's choice. Okay, I'm almost done removing the cover and that was pretty tough. Um, there is a hidden screw, I'll, I'll show it to you later, it's in there, that was the key to the whole thing. But, um, so I removed all the obvious ones, uh, there's a screw here, uh, there is one over here to remove the front piece, that was easy, there was one on the side here, uh, oh no, it was on the front, on the very front here to remove the front piece, so that was easy too. Uh, you don't want to remove any at the bottom, these are for the plate for the motor, so none there. Then the other trick screws were the one behind the cover here. There are two here. There is one more here. And then, no, this starts to, uh, oh, and then there is one here for uh, this cover here. And it starts to take apart the top, but nothing else comes apart. Uh, so there are locks here, this one. So this one you have to pull this off and the lock comes here and there's an other one here and this one you have, I can't remember, you have to pull this in and it comes off and then I got stuck for a while and that's the trick screw, oh man is it tricky that's the one in the front right here at the bottom of this hole there's a screw and uh, to find it, I actually remove this, but you don't need to because there's this access hole, there's a screw and you want to unscrew it partially and I'll finally, that will liberate the front part. So now I think I can take it apart. Well, in the end, the front cover came out first. I, I just pulled it from the bottom. Oh wait, there's a PCB attached to it, okay. Uh, okay, there doesn't seem to be any release mechanism for that flex, so I guess you just pull it, yeah. Okay, all right, so we have that part done. Let's see if I can undo the tabs on the other side the same way. This is also very annoying, man. Okay, I finally got it just by pulling this thing this way to the bottom. And now it's sitting somewhere else. One more attachment point somewhere. And it's underneath. There you go. So the difficulty was just to take the freaking cover apart, but if my only problem here is that this thing has dislodged, then that's it. 
repair done. Um, so this thing was on, on, was on travel. It must have been jostled during travel. Okay, temporarily reconnected the um, screen, the, ca the ribbon cable of the screen. This is so annoying. C couldn't they make them like an inch longer so you have more space? Or couldn't they put screws at the bottom? My goodness. Uh, engineers that don't think about maintenance. Yeah, now it works. All right, I suppose if I do this. Yeah. Okay, repaired. So the fault was simple, but man, the disassembly, yeah, it was just a misery. Okay, I guess now I just have to reassemble it. Same process in reverse. So basically we're done, but for the public good, I'll film a more complete reassembly so you can see every part and screw. Okay, this way, and now I have to get the attachment point at the bottom, got one, got two, yeah, hey. all right. So which one do I do first? Over here. Okay, to do it over here, it's going to do it over there. I need to get the bottom. Just follow this in reverse, you want to do it. Okay, so I'm all good. hook is not in. It is. Okay. There's three screws. Here. Here. Oh. 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 I need to get that thing back in. No. This is like this. Okay, no, it works. Okay, that can be assembled afterwards, and then there's a screw there. Okay. There should be two hooks, one here, one there. It should snap, snap, and there's another one right here. Snap, all right. Then the secret screw in the front that you don't take entirely out, it's just made to a noise, so you just unscrew it so the tongue can go out a little bit and then so it can stay in place. Okay. Okay. Oh, I've got it. This, which in the end I didn't have to remove. It, it helped me a little bit. I, I could I could see the releases at the bottom. Oh great, wait. One screw I forgot. That's this one. One right here. And then this, um, the little tabs here are flexible, so that should come. Come on, you hold, there you go. All right. Okay, back to making Halloween costumes. Oh, yeah. What's it you're making, by the way? Um, the Padme top. Oh. I'm not doing a good job at it, but that's okay. Yes, it does work. We'll resume our normal vintage tech videos after Halloween. See you then.